Guys, welcome back to the show. Our guests tonight are representatives of the brand new voluntarist charitable organization known as Voluntary Virtue that hopes to help create a world where charitable actions are done for those in need solely through the motivations of virtuous individuals. Their mission is to promote charitable actions free from coercion, both through direct contributions and inspiring local volunteer efforts. You can find more at their website, voluntaryvirtue.org. Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO and CMO of Voluntary Virtue, it's Christian Moore and our very own Sherry Voluntary. I'm not going to ask Sherry hey. how she's doing. We already did that. Christian, how are you doing? I am. Uh, I'm doing fantastic. You know, it, it's been a great last couple of weeks and Voluntary Virtue is a huge part of that. So I'm super excited to be back. We haven't spoken in a long time since last time you were on my show. So it's, it's great to hear from, from you guys and be on this program. So I'm happy to be here. I just want to say before we get into the weeds of voluntary virtue that I was in fact on Christian's show and my appearance on the show was something like three or four hours long. I mean, we, yeah. we went in, we went into a bunch of stuff. So bravo, sir. Yeah. Well done. I've been on Christian's show too. And it was like six or seven hours. So just yeah. so you know. Well, I, well that's because you're full of hot air. But anyway, Christian, <laughs> tell us about voluntary virtue. Right. So voluntary virtue is kind of like you said in your introduction, which was very good. Thank you for that. Uh, it is a nonprofit organization based around helping those in need virtuously. Uh, but it's a little bit more than a standard charity. It's about promoting principled involvement in charitable giving. And so a lot of people would say, well, aren't most private charities kind of involved in that act of, of charitable giving? Well, mm -hmm. that, it gets a little complicated whenever you start thinking about the number of private charities that take money from the state, and you start considering the fact of, that a lot of these charities don't do as much as they can to promote continued volunteer work, a kind of a self-perpetuating system in communities so where they don't have to always be there to help. Uh, and that's something that we really aim to try to, to get right at the heart at with this program, with this company. And uh, it's it's something that I spend a lot of time thinking about and 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 doing my best to make sure it comes to a reality. Uh, now, speaking of that, I've I've seen some stuff on the website. And I'm going to turn it over to Sherry here really quick. There's there's an article right on the website that talks about uh, for for the layman that everyone knows the the word volunteer. I mean, we're of course Sherry and I are from the volunteer state, so everyone knows what a volunteer <laughs> is. And and obviously the word voluntarist or voluntarist obviously has its roots in volunteer or voluntary. So ex explain for the layman who's this is the first episode they've ever seen. What is a voluntarist, and how does that apply to this organization? Okay, so a voluntarist is someone who believes that all human interaction should be based on consent of the individuals involved. Uh, and that is the basis of our philosophy is that you own yourself completely and that you should have all the say over what goes on with your body and your property as well. Um, so the way that that comes involved into our, our charity, Voluntary Virtue, is that uh, as Christian was saying before, many charities may accept, you know, state monies or uh, help people that are not that are sort of aggressors on people and their their, um, you know, rights. So we want to definitely ethically source, uh, as we called it, um, our giving, so that it's only coming from people who choose because of their goodwill towards others and their desire to help people to give in that way. And we also want to not just drop money on people or drop a moment of help, but we really want to do things that get people back on the path of self-reliance, because that's really where we would like, you know, to be ourselves and to, to have people uh, shoot for that goal is a goal of self-reliance, being um, a productive person who provides value to their family, to themselves and their community. So that's really what we are, the, and the angle of voluntarism, how that comes into play. Now, that's that's an interesting point, because I know a lot of people, when they when they criticize something like government welfare, beyond the fact that it's it's technically coercion in the sense of they're they're using tax dollars, which is stolen money, but not just that, but it's the principle of the matter that 
welfare makes people dependent on the state rather than empowering them to do better for themselves. So I'm, I'll turn this back over to Christian. What are, what are some ideas that you guys might have in mind to do that, to really expound on the empowering people to help themselves as opposed to being reliant on handouts? Well, this is actually a great opportunity to talk about one of the programs that we've developed along with the company called the Tactical Charity Society. And this is a group that we formed uh, to really help mobilize people to get involved on their own terms, right? Because the dream at the end of the day is that if voluntary virtue was to disappear from the face of the earth, people would still be continuing its mission, right? If the state came in, whacked us up over the side of the head and said, you can't do this anymore or whatever, we get coerced out of it or something like that. We want to leave behind uh, w ways for people to, to be involved communally in this giving. And, and a great example of that could just be uh, checking up on your neighbors and family. If you know someone's going through a hard time, reach out to them. Uh, if somebody's having trouble that you know, let's say they lost their job because the government shut down their business during you know, the craziness of the last year and a half, and they need some help to get by, and their choices are, to either lose their home or go to the government, offer to help them. Um, get, you, you have an opportunity to make a massive impact in somebody's life virtuously and to help. Uh, you're essentially, think about it this way, you're basically replacing what the state justifies itself for existing for. Uh, whenever you go in and, and you help these people, you're basically saying, we don't need you, we've got each other. And to me, that's a really powerful message and something that I want to help get out there as much as we can. Now, that that kind of brings up an interesting point. I'll, I'll turn this over to both of you guys to, to kind of bat this around. Um, with a lot of organizations and, and you know, I, I know it's been said many times and I don't have the data right offhand that, you know, um, Americans in particular are, are if, if not among, they're the most charitable people in the world. You look at the millions and millions of dollars that Americans give uh, charity every single year, despite the fact that they're having so much of their money taken out of their paychecks through through taxes, property taxes, sales taxes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And yet people still figure out a way to dig deep to help out each other. But one of the concerns a lot of people rightly have with a lot of charities is, well, what's my money going towards? And, and you see that people bat around that idea of the law of, well, they really only have to dedicate 10%. You know, the Red Cross, for instance, they really only have to give 10%. The other 90% can go to administrative costs. So how is voluntary virtue different in that regard? Well, the first thing is, and sorry, Sherry, I want to take this one because no, this is right really ahead. important to me. <laughs> sure. Um, we are 100% financially transparent. Every single expense, transaction, donation, everything, donations won't have direct names given to the public, obviously, but you will know exactly how much money we made every month, how much we spent on what, as if we were itemizing for a, you know, a coercion form or something like that. Um, we, we want this to be as, we want to build trust with people because I totally understand where someone's coming from when they look at charities and they say, these things get bloated and they get inefficient and they're almost just as bad as government as far as the money going to help people. And, and I resonate with that a lot. It's something that I thought about a lot whenever I was just, you know, before I even got involved in charity work. And so that's one of the ways that we're going to go about addressing that. But the other way that we're going to, to do our best is through this communal involvement, because by getting other members of the community engaged, not with their money, but with their time and um, with their manpower, we can, we can, get rid of a lot of that uh, bloated overhead money transferring here and there and uh, making sure that that people get the help they need as efficiently and effectively as possible that's essentially our number two goal after being principled and and ethical people so <laughs> yeah I, just to add to what what Christian was saying, you know, everybody knows that the government is inefficient. Even people who want government programs will will acknowledge that most of that money doesn't go to the programs that it's it's intended to go to. So I think everybody can sort of get that sense and and really wants to help people uh, in a way that goes directly to them and makes is impactful. Because why bother if you're if you're not? And um, the other aspect of that that he mentioned um community that really is such an important part and i think 
one of the biggest things for me personally that I see through doing this is I I really believe and see have seen throughout my life where government has has degraded communities and a lot of people don't know their neighbors and they don't know how to help people who who are right around the corner from them because they've been disempowered from doing that whereas you know the government all the rhetoric talks about empowering people and helping people but really it it makes them rely on the government rather than a community that wants you know, if my neighbor is suffering and they're having a hard time, I want them to get better, do better, whatever it is. And I want to help them do that. And so I've seen where communities have really been destroyed by government um, interventions, you know, like instead of in a, in a small case that anyone can understand, um, your neighbor's lawn is, is you know, the yard's, mo you know, too high. And people will often call the authorities, the city on them or the county and rather than just going next door and being neighborly and saying, hey, do you need help for, for one? And two, let's talk about this. You know, why is you letting your grass get longer and I'm getting rodents or something? So it's important to, to rebuild those connections. And that's really one of the things that I think we are trying to, to accomplish. At least I know for, for my part, that's really one of the things that I am and super excited about is developing a community of people who are principled who want to live those principles and help each other out and um, be really connected and tied into each other so that we know there's something we can do. Well, really quick before we take our commercial break here, um, I'll, I'll let you both of you guys take a crack at it. Make the sales pitch uh, of voluntary virtue to the layman who really is, is not politically active, has never heard of voluntarists before, doesn't identify as libertarian or Republican or Democrat or anything in between. What's the pitch of this organization to someone who's politically agnostic that's hearing some of these ideas for the first time? Sure, I can go ahead and, and, and give a crack at it. Um, there are still, no matter how many charities there seem to be, no matter how much the government gets involved, there are still so many people that need help. And we are one of the most charitable and giving societies on earth. I accept that 100%. But it doesn't it doesn't take a, a scientist or a data analyst or anything like that to see that there are still people out there that need our help. And the communal bonds that we've lost over the last couple of decades has contributed to this greatly. So Voluntary Virtue is going to be focusing on both of those things directly and doing our best to make the biggest impact we can in as many people's lives as possible. That's great. <laughs> now, uh, if, if you had another thought, Sherry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just, I, I, I think what Pat, uh, what Christian said was, was excellent. Um, I would just add to that, that, you know, as a charity, not only do we respect the people that we are trying and aiming to help, but we also respect you and uh, the giver then that's because we want to be transparent. We want you to to trust us. We want to earn that credibility with you. And uh, that's really, it, it is really important to us. And we've, we've talked a lot about it in our meetings because we don't, we, we respect that people don't have to give us anything or help anyone that they don't choose to. And so for, for people to do that through us, we feel is a, a great um, responsibility and, and we intend to respect that and, and earn that credibility. Guys, I'm going to play devil's advocate with you here just for a moment. Now, we talked a little bit about the transparency of your organization. I think that's that's very admirable. But at the same time, an organization has to prosper. It you you guys have to get donations. You have to have staying power. People are gonna people are gonna be relying on you. But you talk so much about empowering communities and people to help themselves. So, devil's advocate question: uh, What about people who are concerned about the longevity of your organization? If you're helping people help themselves as opposed to having help for yourselves. Uh, yes, please. I mean, that would be amazing if we uh, worked so well and did so much that people didn't need us anymore. Uh, that'd be a wonderful world to live in. Um, and so I think for us, it's not about having an organization and saying, oh, we we run this thing and we do this thing. It's It's really to help people and it's really to give people ways to help other people uh, and build community. So um, for us, if that's accomplished and our mission is done, then see, see you later. We'll go off to, to other things. Um, that's that's the, the point. We want to, to get people back to recognizing that 
you don't need permission to help people, right? You, you are an, you have your own agency and you get to see the need in your community and go out there, go forth and, and do things to, um, help the, help people that need help. So, um, I think that'd be great if we eventually didn't have to do our job. Well, voluntary virtue really comes off to me so far as a very grassroots kind of an organization, kind of kind of building from the from the bottom up, and that's great. But with that said, are there are there any really like large scale projects or or long term type outlooks or or major events or annual type get-togethers that you guys already have planned? Well, that's actually fantastic because I wanted to talk about our first event that we've got coming up, which is called the Celebration of Freedom and Bovinity Festival. Ooh. Or if you'd like, we could call it Moo Fest. Moo Fest. I, yeah. I would like yeah. Moo Fest. Go on. <laughs> so essentially what this is, is this is us getting out there and, and showing that we mean business, right? So our board president, Patrick Smith, uh, awesome voluntarist individual who everybody should become acquainted with uh, if they aren't already uh, ran this event last year on his birthday and we as voluntary virtue saw an opportunity to do it once again but with the power of the nonprofit behind it and what we're going to be doing a lot with this is the primary goal obviously is to feed the homeless which to a lot of people may seem like not the most direct usage right like there's plenty of other people in cases that could perhaps use more money more directly, which we will certainly be looking into in the future. But what this gives us the opportunity to do is start first with the community. By having a, a sort of event like this, we can start from the very beginning and show that we mean business when we want to help get other people involved in charitable action. So we're going to have steaks, bacon wrapped filet mignons, all the fixings, grills running, and we're going to be feeding every single hungry mouth on the south side of Dallas that needs it. And uh, we're going to get as many people involved as we can in doing so. Christian, where are you from originally? I am from Houston, Texas. You're from Houston, Texas. Now, that's very interesting to me because me and Sherry are from the actual South, not Texas. And and <laughs> I, I have never heard anyone <laughs> enunciate the letter G on fixings. It's fixings, son. Yeah. Fixing. As you were talking, <laughs> I looked over at Sherry and she was like, what the hell did he just say to me? I, I guess I'm just a city slicker these days. I've been in, uh, I've been he's in. He's got some Hill of that book learning. He, yep. He's all uppity now. <laughs> well, I haven't had enough PBRs for my Southern accent to come out. I'm sorry. Rising above his raisin. <laughs> well, you know what? That actually, that actually gives me an interesting segue to another question I had for you guys, which is, uh, how does voluntary virtue go about deciding? Because, I mean, no, no matter what the organization is, big or small, you know, there's finite resources and you're trying to decide where best to apply those resources. How does voluntary virtue go about deciding where they're going to uh, direct their funds and direct their manpower? We well, oh, go ahead. Oh, Christian. Yeah, go ahead. OK, well, sure. I, I, I can take it once again. I'll steal the microphone from Sherry Voluntary. Um, we have created a system, a committee specifically, directly underneath the board, which is called the Awards Committee. And this is a committee of individuals who have been deemed by the board to be ethical and voluntary-minded people who can go through each and every case that comes before voluntary virtue and make a determination on whether or not that is the most effective use of our resources. And I think in doing this, by adding that layer between the board and who, who are mainly focused on operations and continual running and people who are who are kind of a, a step away from that, who can help to make decisions on who, who needs help the most, we give ourselves this kind of uh, layer of objectivity that's really hard whenever you're directly involved in everything. And that's another place that I think a lot of other smaller charities, uh, it's a resource that they don't have. But thanks to the people that comprise Voluntary Virtue and the connections that we have, there are so many wonderful, amazing, ethical people out there who want to be a part of helping in this process that I have absolutely zero doubt that every decision that committee makes will be the best possible decision one could possibly make. So who watches the watchers? Ultimately, that's the board, right? Because, <laughs> I mean, so 
at the end of the day, you know, corporate structure, the board is above the committee. So if for whatever reason the committee says we need to, uh, I don't know, buy 10,000 boxes of crayons for Marines or something, we can step in and say this is probably not a good use of voluntary virtue funds, so we're not going to do that. Um, but at the same time, in part of the selection process for these people, um, they wouldn't be there if we didn't already have a lot of trust in them. And if they haven't already proven themselves to be an ethical person in, in some manner. So I, it's not something I have to really worry about, but at the same time, the board is always there. You will always have Christian Moore and, and you always have Patrick Smith and our other board members to sit, to be there as, as in the way of all of that. Yeah. And I think, too, to what you were saying before, um, that's one of the reasons that transparency is so important to us is because we want you to be the watchers as well. I mean, if you're donating your funds, your hard-earned money or time or talents to us, then we want you to feel and be able to see that that is going to the places we say it's going to go to and do the things that we say we're going to do with it. Um, so that's one of the the benefits of being very transparent is that we people can see that and see that, oh, okay, they said they were going to do this and that's where the money went. Um, so that's that's something we really want. And and also when, when we started this, um, we definitely, like like Christian said, ethical people involved, but also we want to make sure that the help is going to people who also are trying to live an ethical lifestyle. So state agents need not apply. Like that's something <laughs> that we're passionate about. The scope of our charity is more directly towards people who choose to live in a peaceful way with their communities, their neighbors. Um, and so that's just, you know, every, every organization has to have a scope because like you said, the resources are finite and you can't just help everywhere and everyone that that's, you know, that's too big of a, a proposition for us. So we are directing it more towards the um, community of people who uh, know what the non-aggression principle is and want to live it or, or do that without actually knowing maybe they don't know what the non-aggression principle is but they're they're peaceful people that is who we aim to help and to um really encourage and buttress in in what we do now sherry you're the chief marketing officer of voluntary virtue so what's the organization doing to uh do a little outreach and drum up some drum up some good buzz Right. So right now we have our, our two Facebook pages, which are the Voluntary Virtue, kind of corporate, nice, pretty side, you know, respectable page. And then we have our Tactical Charity Society Facebook page, uh, which I think Christian mentioned earlier, which is really the fun part and the part that I think we all enjoy, um, the memes. You know, it's all the memes <laughs> and and getting to know people and having fun together and sort of our uh, farm team, if you will, for the boots on the ground uh, activism that we intend to and hope to perform. Um, that's where we've really started and are focusing at this point. Um, there will be blog posts in the future uh, and other social media will will branch out. We have a Twitter page. It's not that active yet. Um, so those are those are the things that we have at the moment. Um, hopefully some some advertising in the future. But that's really the community part of it is where, like you said, it's grassroots. We really want to draw from that and uh, move forward with the community behind us. Now, on that note of getting the community behind you, I'm gonna I'm gonna give both of you guys uh, one last really good sales pitch. To let's say you're talking to people that already you know they they have a budget. Let's say you're talking to a business. Let's let's say you're talking to other organizations that have annual budgets of giving to nonprofit organizations. I was a nonprofit VP. I know how that works. There's there's that calendar year. It rolls around. There's a budget <laughs> that's set aside for charitable giving, and you want to be on their doorsteps, right? When they're making those decisions. So how are you making the pitch to those types of entities specifically to say, you you have a budget of X, we want you to give some of that budget to voluntary virtue, as opposed to say some other initiative, the Red Cross, Doctors Without Borders, what have you. And, and by the way, I'm not talking down to any other organizations, but how are you selling them to give you a piece of that pie? If you uh, want to donate money to an organization that exists solely 
to be replaced by its own works, then donate to Voluntary Virtue. If you want to donate to an organization that one day hopes that it has done its job so well that it no longer has to continue doing charity because everybody else is already doing it, donate to Voluntary Virtue. If you want to see a world where your neighbors want to come up to you and ask how you're doing, if you want to have a world where you can go up to your neighbors and it not be some kind of hostile interaction like we see so often these days, to build those communities, build those bridges, then you should donate to Voluntary Virtue. To me, the financial transparency, the mission, the ethics, the people running it, you know, I'm a little biased being the CEO and whatnot, but looking from the outside, I, I couldn't find a better one if I wanted to. On that note, I'll ask you this. Where can people go to support Voluntary Virtue, sign up to be a volunteer, sign up to give? I know, and, and by the way, not just give of their money, but maybe give of their, their time and their talents, like Sherry was talking about earlier. Where can go, people go to learn more about Voluntary Virtue? First off, you can go find us over at www.voluntaryvirtue.org. But like Sherry was saying earlier, please go check out the Facebook pages, especially the Tactical Charity Society. That's where that's where we're going to be pulling a lot from the grassroots stuff. So if you want to be able to be one of the people who breaks ground on this project in your own community, TCS is where you need to be. Because when that trumpet blows and we're looking for people to help, that's going to be the first pool that has that we're going to be accessing from. So come come over if you want to donate by all means there's plenty of links on the page whatever you feel is appropriate uh, that we have, have earned through this pitch uh, and go check out the facebook pages and stay involved and, and can i just add to that that's a great great pitch there christian um that even if you if you can't give anything right now financially or any of your time because i know people are are struggling and and things are you know not always in the greatest spot just liking, commenting, sharing our content, uh, involving yourself in the community, um, those things not only will benefit you as far as getting involved in the community and getting to know people, but they really do help us get in that Facebook algorithm and place higher. It's a weird thing. Uh, we all know we've all dealt with the algorithm and and the stuff that the games that they play with with Facebook algorithm. So just just doing those kinds of things, interacting with the people, talking on the posts, liking them, sharing them, those are such a, a big plus for us. And um, we really appreciate just, you know, saying anything in there <laughs> in the in the comment of a post really helps it. It really does. Guys, I'm gonna get you out of here on this one. Sherry, oh, shut boy. up. <laughs> Christian <laughs> is a grilled cheese a melt um hmm, that's a tough one i'm gonna say no because i think melts have to have other stuff on them however sure. i'm open to the alternative can you believe that's it sherry christian is a that's... real libertarian christian that's that is correct a grilled answer. cheese <laughs> is not a melt and it is not a melt because it does not have other ingredients Guys, thank you so much for being on the show. Everybody go check out Voluntary Virtue. It's voluntaryvirtue.org. And we will be right back to wrap up the show. Mm -hmm.